So how, for, I think for many yoga teachers, perhaps even the majority in the modern world, um, yoga teachers will find that a quite a, a lofty ideal uh, and may question themselves and say, well, what business do I have to teach yoga if I myself am, am so largely led by my impulses? Um, is there, Is there a range? Like, how, how, what would you say to yoga teachers in terms of their, because they themselves are also facing their own imperfections, actually. Yes. And so, um, how then to be in this role of yoga teacher and to be responsible towards one's students and to be, to represent uh, yoga with fidelity and, and uh, not create more confusion? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why this happens, but uh, for some reason, yoga teacher, the title of being a yoga teacher has has a lot of weight to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that. Uh, I think a uh, lot of uh, spiritual books and spiritual literature has contributed towards that. Because we read about lives and uh, experiences of uh, mystics who are yoga teachers. Mm -hmm. No? Like tomorrow you read a book about uh, Mr. Ayangar or Yogananda and you know, four or five other uh, yoga teachers who have lived inspirational lives. You read it and then your mind doesn't see what they have gone through, how they have worked on themselves. Your mind immediately wants to be them. So tomorrow you, will, you will become a yoga teacher, you will immediately say, but look at Yogananda, how he was and look at me. We are all at our own stages of growth. Mm. There's a beautiful story. One day a little boy was walking on the on the beach and you know all these fishes sometimes they come on the shore uh, to just let go of their bodies. So there were lots of fishes that had come on the shore and this little boy, five, six year old boy was running, picking up a fish, running back to the ocean, throwing the fish back. Again coming back, running, picking up the fish, going back, mm. one at a time. There was this adult uh, looking at the boy and he started laughing. So, <laughs> you think there's so millions of fishes dying here. You think you'll make difference to everybody? So he just stops there and looks at him and says, no, I, will, I know I will not make a difference to anybody, but the one that I throw back in the ocean, I will make a difference to that fish. Mm. So the yoga teacher should not be under pressure that I'm going to save the world. Mm. You know, the yoga teacher should not have a messiah complex. Mm. Let's take this. Be simple, be humble and teach what you know. Teach what you know. Gladly teach what you have experienced and have the humility to send your student to other teachers if you feel you don't know something. There are always teachers. For example, if you feel you know asanas well but you are not little, not confident about pranayama, then if your student comes and says, oh, I've worked with you for one and a half year, now I want to go a little deeper in my pranayama, can you teach me? And then you ask yourself, can I really teach you pranayama? No, no, no. Okay, I will send him to my teacher or I send him to somebody else I know. Have the humility mm. to direct your student somewhere else. Why not? Thirdly, just because you are a yoga teacher, don't assume that you are perfect. Becoming a yoga teacher is the first part of your grander journey. This is where the yoga teacher needs to know that when you become a yoga teacher, the first and foremost responsibility is towards yourself. And what it means to be responsible to yourself means to be responsible towards your own transformation and therefore your own sadhana. Mm. Do not ignore your own transformation or your own practice in exchange of classes 
And I have seen this happen to a lot of yoga teachers. You know, when you start teaching, you have many students, many classes, and then, wow, that's amazing. The whole glamour of yoga teaching just stays mm. here. Mm. And yoga teaching can be glamorous. I mean, you know, come on. Imagine a case. In your home, nobody even bothers to give you attention. <laughs> but when you come to a yoga class, there are 10 people in front of you. And you say, raise your arms, and everybody's raising their arms. Mm. Bend down, everybody's bending down. Wow. Every class that you teach can fuel your ego. Mm. So it's very easy to get infatuated by this. Mm. Do not compromise your sadhana. Remember, you're primarily a yoga student and then only a yoga teacher. Remember, unless you transform yourself, you cannot inspire others. Primary responsibility as a yoga teacher is being a yoga student. Only when you are humble enough to accept that you are still a yoga student, mm. you will have the humility to project yourself as a yoga teacher. Mm. This is mm. many 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 yoga teachers don't get very swayed by this the whole teacher thing. Mm. Student, you have no right to to claim anything unless you have completely realized. And that time you will not even have any need to mm. proclaim anything. So clarity, honesty, mm. discipline, trust, patience. We all need to get back to those simple definitions, simple variables. And yoga will happen then yoga will not be a process of doing. Yoga will happen. Mm. I'm saying it again. Clarity, honesty, discipline, trust, sincerity. These are important variables. Alright. Masad, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and listening to you today. And um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>